Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to Echoes of War, the channel where forgotten wartime innovations, survival systems, and field-tested methods are brought back to light. Every week, we uncover practical lessons from history that still work in the modern world. Today, we're diving into six World War II heating methods that most soldiers never even got the chance to use. But they remain powerful, functional, and entirely off-grid solutions even now. During the Second World War, armies across Europe and the Pacific fought more than just each other. They battled the cold. From the frozen forests of Finland to the steppes of Russia, frostbite claimed more men than bullets. Military engineers scrambled to develop portable heating methods that could keep troops alive without giving away their position. But the logistical nightmare of wartime production meant that many of these innovations were shelved, buried in manuals, or confined to prototypes that never made it to the field. When rediscovered decades later, these forgotten systems revealed something extraordinary. They worked. They didn't need electricity or modern materials, only resourcefulness and a basic understanding of chemistry and insulation. What makes them remarkable is not nostalgia, but their continued functionality. Anyone living off-grid, preparing for emergencies, or simply fascinated by wartime ingenuity can recreate them today. The wax-sealed heat cell proved that slow burn is better than open flame. Among the rarest of these inventions was the wax heat cell, a compact device created by British engineers in 1942. The idea was simple. Combine paraffin wax, metal shavings, and a bit of magnesium dust inside a sealed tin. When ignited through a vented wick, the wax melted slowly, releasing stored heat for up to six hours without smoke or light. This made it perfect for stealth operations in cold environments. These days, modern enthusiasts have actually managed to replicate the original concept by using candle wax and really fine steel wool, all packed neatly into a small tin. The reaction between those two materials creates a steady, contained sort of heat, perfect for warming up a small space, or, you know, just keeping your food from freezing solid. It's a much safer and reusable alternative to an alcohol burner, and the best part is it runs completely silently. Now, this method isn't just limited to small tins. It can absolutely be adapted for use in cabins or survival shelters. All you need to do is place several of these tins in a clay pot or a stone chamber, and you'll get a gentle, consistent warmth radiating throughout the space. The peat trench method? Well, it really stands out as a masterclass in heat retention. In Northern Europe, especially places like Finland and Norway, soldiers actually experimented with what they called heat trenches. So, rather than building traditional fires that would give way their position with smoke, they dug narrow channels lined with peat and ash. These trenches were filled with embers, then sealed with wet moss and bark, and left to smolder underground for up to two days. The result was a steady, radiant warmth that travelled right along the Earth's surface, and it was enough to keep their shelters above freezing, even in the harshest conditions. This method, while primitive, remains one of the most efficient off-grid heating techniques known. Modern homesteaders use similar earth heating channels by packing dried organic matter in a shallow trench covered with soil. The slow oxygen restriction keeps it burning beneath the surface, releasing a gentle and sustained heat. 
It can be replicated safely in a backyard setting, provided the trench is monitored and sealed properly. The metal can radiator turned exhaust heat into steady warmth. German field engineers devised a remarkable portable radiator made from nothing more than a steel canister and copper tubing. The system worked by routing exhaust heat from small fuel stoves through coiled tubing submerged in oil or sand, creating a stable heat reservoir. The hot medium continued radiating warmth long after the flame went out, reducing fuel use by half. So this principle is actually, well, pretty easy to replicate today with just a small tin can, a coiled copper tube and some mineral oil. By heating the oil indirectly, you capture and then release energy gradually basically an early version of what's now called a thermal battery. These sorts of setups are honestly ideal for heating workshops, greenhouses, or even small shelters during those tough winter power outages. It's a design that, unfortunately, never reached most soldiers back then due to material shortages, but its simplicity, I'd say, still outperforms many modern improvisations. The chemical brick was the silent heater, really, designed for Arctic units. Not many folks have heard of the calcium chloride heat brick, an emergency issue developed by Canadian and American engineers specifically for Arctic expeditions. When you poured water onto these bricks, the exothermic reaction would release intense heat for several minutes, just long enough to warm your hands, thaw a rifle bolt, or even prevent frostbite. The real challenge, though, was stabilizing the compound, which tended to corrode containers in humid environments, so in the end it saw very little deployment. Yet today, the same reaction forms the basis of reusable hand warmers. With controlled mixtures of calcium chloride or magnesium powder sealed in heat-safe pouches, it's possible to recreate this silent, flameless heater using basic chemistry. For emergency preparedness, it's an efficient solution that doesn't rely on combustion or electricity just a reaction between water and salt-based compounds. The buried brick stove used air tunnels for near-perfect efficiency. Soviet engineers, fighting brutal winters on the Eastern Front, perfected what they called the subterranean stove. Built from clay bricks and a simple metal pipe, it funneled air through a zigzag tunnel under the ground before releasing heat into sleeping shelters. This design allowed a small amount of wood to heat a space far larger than an open fire ever could. The insulation from surrounding soil prevented heat loss and concealed light from enemy reconnaissance. Modern adaptations of this concept known as rocket mass heaters or underground flue stoves, still rely on the same principle. By building an insulated burn chamber and channeling the exhaust through a clay or brick mass, heat is stored and released slowly over hours. Even in a backyard or off-grid cabin, this World War II-era system can cut wood consumption by up to 70%. The oil dust lamp that ran on scraps and never went out. In desperate winter conditions, some soldiers improvised oil dust lamps, a hybrid between a lantern and a heater. They mixed waste oil, sawdust and sand inside a tin, added a cloth wick, and lit it at the surface. The mixture smouldered instead of burning openly, producing consistent warmth with minimal smoke. 
Engineers later refined it into a controlled drip heater, a technology still used in remote outposts today. To apply this at home, one can create a similar device by filling a small metal container with sawdust and pouring in vegetable or motor oil until saturated. Once lit, it burns cleanly for hours and can heat a confined space like a workshop or shed without electricity. Safety precautions are essential. Always ensure ventilation. But the underlying principle remains unchanged since the 1940s. Why rediscovering these lost heating methods matters today? What connects all six methods is not nostalgia, but resilience. These forgotten heating systems were created by necessity, designed to function under stress, and meant to save lives when supply lines broke down. They prove that sustainable, efficient warmth doesn't require modern infrastructure, just understanding and resourcefulness. In an age where power outages and fuel shortages are real concerns, these old designs remind us that true preparedness comes from knowledge, not technology. If you value this kind of deep historical insight, subscribe to Echoes of War and share this video with others who appreciate the blend of history, survival and forgotten craftsmanship. The past still holds answers, sometimes buried under snow, waiting to be rediscovered.